Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Vol State Softball. I again am your host and play by play guy, Sam B, alongside my co host, color commentator, Garrett. And this is game two of the doubleheader between the Walter State Centers and your Vol State Lady Pioneers. <clears throat> the starting lineup for the Senators. Is roughly still the same as game one, but in case you were not here. Kaylee Dixon, who is also batting first. And <clears throat> number eleven, Nora Mack is in the is uh, batting at number two. And there's another offering and a swing and a miss. That is strike two. Jules Johnson at the third hole. Uh, Amari Golden batting fourth, Brooke Copley batting fifth, and there's a swing, a strikeout. So that is out one, down goes Kaylee Dixon, up comes Nora Mack. And we're still getting these lineup together for uh, the Pioneers, but however, uh, who is pitching right now? Garrett? It is Riley Latzenheiser wearing double zero today for the Lady Pioneers. Riley Latzenheiser wearing double zero? I'm going to say, no, that's Caitlin Davis wearing double zeros. Latzenheiser wears 44. As we have another offering coming off that one ball offering, but now it is a two ball no strike offering. Patty Cook is batting sixth for the Senators. Sarah Evans is batting seventh for the Senators. She's also the designated player. Anderson Holsley is batting eighth. And batting ninth is Abigail Taylor. And there is strike one for Nora Mack. That is the Senators lineup, and once we get the lineup done for your Lady Pioneers, we will give it to you, as there is a foul ball to make it a 3-2 full count with one out here in the top of the first in game two. And here's the offering, and that's gonna be a that's gonna be a walk. So one out, one walk. Huh. Fair trade-off, would you say, Garrett? Fair trade-off. One out, one walk. <coughs> and now Jules Johnson's up to bat. There's an offering. Whoa, almost got her, but almost actually got her with the ball. But, however, there's a stolen base by uh, Nora Mack. And uh, Garrett now has the lineup for the... Uh, Lady Pioneers. As Sammy P mentioned earlier, there was a mix-up on our uh, numbers on the scorecard. It actually is Caitlin Davis. Sammy P was correct. Out there in the center circle, as uh, Sammy P just mentioned, she's already got one out. And there's a swing and a miss for one ball, one strike with one out. The defensive formation for the Lady Pioneers in the second game of this doubleheader will be Bailey Osbrooks behind the plate playing catcher. Lydia Kirby at first base. Moran Bellevue playing second base. Third base is Corinne Knapp. And there's another offering. <clears throat> Ball two. So the count is two balls, one strike, one out with a runner on second. Shortstop will be Corey Harris. Left field is Katie Davis. Center field is Anna Harrison. And right field is Michaela Fupa. And that ball is blasted right behind the press box here towards the fire hall that makes it a two two count with one out and Garrett you would think after that first showing in the first game and that was better and there's a nice diving play on the ball but it is not able to be contained and the senators are picking up right where they left off and immediately putting runs to board that's exactly right Sammy P picking up 
continuing the momentum from the last game, really from the last inning that they played on the offensive side of the ball, Sammy. Quite literally, the very last inning, it just, everything got away from the Lady Pioneers. And now there's Amari Good Golden, Golden coming out there. How did I trip over that last name? How did I trip over that? that, that, that it, 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 it's, it's literally the word, Golden. How did I trip over that? Oh, well. Count is one strike, no balls, and one out with a runner on first. And now it is one ball, one strike, one out. <coughs> Good. Two balls, one strike, one out. Here's the offering, and that is a foul ball went straight into the crowd. Again, we are seeing a lot of physics be defied or just some bad angles that's just sending everything straight to the ground. It, it mainly astonishes me on bunts when it's just going straight into the ground. It is interesting, Sammy P, to watch that happen. Uh, count is 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes, two. I mean, two balls, two strikes, one out. And there is another foul ball by Golden. Take a little delivery, and that is hit, fielded. Oh, almost fielded. It is that that just took another bad, just another bad bounce. We're seeing just a series of bad bounces when it's trying to get into the glove. That's right, Sammy P. For both teams, we've seen it happen. The bad bounces are picking off from where they left off in the last game. They didn't. They they didn't even take a. They didn't even take a break. They just started they from immediately the they previous didn't, game. They didn't take a lunch break like we did. No, we took a very nice lunch break. Runners on the corners. As Brooke Copley comes up to bat, and here's the offering, and there's going to be a base stolen on second, and she's called safe. That was a close play it there. It was very close. I'm actually leaning more towards she's out, but this umpire is, said safe. This is one of those situations where if they had the replay review technology, I think uh, the head coach, Christian Lynn, would absolutely at least take a look at it. Too. I mean, we technically have the replay technology. It's just not able to be used. It's for the game, yeah. And that is hard on Schwung, and that is at the warning track on the fence, and that's going to get two runs. And already, things are getting out of control for the Lady Pioneers. As Walter State is now up 3 nothing, <clears throat> And here comes Carly Cook. How did Carly Cook do total last game, you'd say? Not, not asking for average, just... Just Carly Cook had a great game last game. She hit a three-run home run in that seventh inning to uh, really break the game open. It, at the time, Sammy, it was a six to three. She hit a three-run home run to make it nine to three to a really set the Senators to a victory. Let's hope she doesn't continue off that momentum and make it five to nothing. Let's hope she can't continue off it. But here's the delivery. And plate vision, saw that go right down the middle for a strike. Here's another offering, and that is going to be high for a ball. So the count is 1-1 one, one with one out still on the top of the first. <clears throat> and now, after being almost as silent as a mouse in church, uh, during the first game, the center's bench is appearing to have life while the Fall State bench is silent. That's a great observation, Sammy P. What happened as the count is two balls, one strike, with the offering coming this way, and that is going to be uh, strike two. Momentum is a big, big, uh, big thing, Sammy P. 
it, momentum is a big thing, but however, the Senators are really riding on that right now. The bench is absolutely showing it. And there's another offering, and that is slammed right there, but it's going to be an out at first, but however, runner advances to third. That's a great play by <laughs> Lydia Kirby there to let the ball go to her teammate Marianne Bellevue right behind her at short to get the uh, put out. And now we have Sarah Evers coming up here. She's the designated player, which is like the designated hitter for baseball. It's basically the same thing, just different verbiage. And that is going to be strike one. Two outs, one strike. Honestly, I'm... I'm just wondering, can the Pioneers make sure this doesn't get any more out of hand? That'll be a big key for Caitlin Davis here to just get the last out of this inning and get her teammates up to the plate. Because here's the thing, because maybe the bats can pick off, can pick up where they were, you know, starting to stall. And swing and a miss as we have strike two that coming down the plate. That was a great pitch to change up the pace. Was that a joke? Was that a change-up pitch? I really can't identify some pitches. I'm not very good at that. Well, the pace was definitely slower, so it threw off the timing of the hitter. And that is blasted back there for a good catch by Fuqua to end the inning. So the Pioneers managed to uh, stop the bleeding, as we would say, uh, and it appears the Senators are still... Here, still willing to fight and just keep on putting up points. We're going to take a break. We'll catch you at the bottom of the first. You're listening to the Pioneer Sports Network. And we are back on the Ball State Sports Network with the bottom of the first inning with Haley Lawing coming off just, I would say, that monstrous backstretch of game one to basically keep the Pioneers scoreless uh, and to allow her teammates to just continue to pile on the runs as she goes up against Fuqua, who's batting first. Count is 1-1. Lying was our defensive MVP in the first game, Sammy. And she was fully deserving, like you just mentioned, to keep her. And he runs off the board from the Lady Pioneers. And the offering now is going to be two balls, one strike. And the Lady Pioneers are trying to fire up the bench. And here we go. There's another offering. And swing! And that is going to be... Tipped back. Is it going to be a wild pitch? It's going to be a foul ball. It's going to be a foul ball. Even the count at 2-2. Two two. Even the count 2-2. Two two. Because she kept running, but I was like, it went backwards. It's like, could it yeah. have been a wild pitch? And she just noticed it and just ran for it? Yeah, the umpire the umpire made sure to make sure that that was a, understood that it was a foul ball pretty early in that play. Count is 2-2, two two, no outs. Long. The offering swing right up the middle to second. 
And that's going to get Fuqua on base. Great job by Fuqua to drive the pitch right back up the middle. It even hit second base, Sammy, so you can't get much more dead center than that. No. Directly center. As Corey Harris now comes up to bat. Fuqua is Fuqua is going to use her speed. She looked like she was going to try to steal that base there. She has 58 stolen bases on the season to this point, Sammy. So it is honestly expected mm -hmm. that she'll at least get an attempt at a stolen base. Well, you know what to say. Death, taxes, Fuqua stealing a base. Here we go. There she goes again. And that is a bad overthrow. That was a bad overthrow. I immediately thought that we had a replacement at catcher. I thought the Senators got Joe Milton for a second there. That, that throw did. Uh, that was overthrown by a, by a wide, wide margin, but Kaylee Dixon in center field was alert to keep the ball. Because mm -hmm. that, that could have gotten way out of away, hand. Yeah. And goodness, we could have seen probably somebody steal home all the way from first if, the ball if that got ball away. got out of hand. Which that would have been an interesting sight. That would it? have been to see the reaction time of these players relaying the ball back to home. But that'd be a great what if. That'd be a great what if. Would be a highlight for the century. There's another big hit going out to kind of right center fieldish, and Fuqua is going all the way to third, and she is able to get there and be safe. That's heads up base running by Fuqua there to advance from second to third on the sack fly. Well, not really sacrifice fly, but I mean about halfway. She does move up. About halfway through, she just said, "Nah, I'm gonna just fly." She just her speed was elevated, on display once again there. Jumped and started to just slide in midair. As we have another offering, that's a bunt that was coming from Katie Davis. Great play. And we have immediately a response run again. Sounded like a broken record, Sammy. Heads up, base running. Michaela Fuqua didn't go at first contact. She delayed until her teammate Katie Davis was out at first base before advancing home, and that gave her just the amount of time to reach home safely. And with all that, Lydia Kirby now comes up to bat. Nobody on base, two outs. And she saw that ball come from a mile away. It, it was a ball. The energy of the Lady Pioneers dugout has certainly ramped up to where it was the first game. And that is going to be a pop out coming up. And that will end the inning. Score at the end of one. The Senators, three. Year of Vol State Lady Pioneers, one. We will be back on the Vol State Sports Network after this break. And we are back at the top of the second inning with, I believe that's number 12 for the Senators at bat. So that would be Halsley, and that is a swing and a miss. Interesting pitch to start off the A-B, the changeup, changing up the pace a little bit. 
affecting the timing of Holsey. And another one that is going straight to the second base and up for the first for the out. How to immediately have a response. Two pitches, two pitches equaling one out, Tam, uh, Sammy. I think you take that every single inning. Mm -hmm. And now we got Abigail Taylor now of the bat. Here's the offering, and that's going to be ball one. You know, ever since uh, audio man Michael has opened up, I mean, Michael Matthew, excuse me, got, M, got too many M names on the brain today. And there is a uh, ball going straight to the dirt for the out at first. Ever since Matthew kindly opened up these windows, it has been nice here in the press box. So Appreciate it, Matthew. We've been having a lot of wind coming through. As now the, the uh, cycle restarts with uh, Kaylee Dixon coming up to bat with two outs. Not a single hit on base, and that's going straight over center field. Diving catch is no good. It is bobbled and dropped, and it allows Dixon to get to first. Great effort by Anna Harrison out there in center field to give herself a chance to catch in the ball, but it just dropped and hit the outfield grass before she could get there. If I'm not mistaken, I think from what we could see before it was blocked, uh, I think that her contact with the ground actually knocked it out as uh, Nora Mack shows up at the plate to bat. <clears throat> Two outs, runner on first. And stolen base incoming and safe. I, I'm thinking... The Pioneers, the Lady Pioneers definitely had had stolen a play out of the uh, Senators playbook there because they pitched out knowing, or at least predicting, that they would steal a base, and that's exactly what happened. Precisely, and there is a foul ball sent straight over to the fire hall again. Count is one ball, one strike with two outs. Runner stole second and is on second. And here's the pitch. And that is going to the ground, straight over to first for the out to retire the side and keep a runner in scoring position from doing damage. Score remains 3-1. We're going to come back for the bottom of the second. After this break, you're listening to the Ball State Sports Network. And welcome back to the Pine Ball State Sports Network. I am Sammy P, your play-by-play -play announcer, if you're just not joining us, alongside my colleague and co-host and color commentator, Garrett. And we are in the bottom of the second, as Loing is giving a bunch of offerings to Bellevue. <coughs> And the count is two balls, no strikes, no outs. Now, Garrett, after what happened in that final inning to basically put the game entirely out of reach for the Lady Pioneers, do you, th do you think the confidence boost from being able to 
you know, being able to keep them from having any meaningful hits in uh, the second, uh, the top of the second. Do you think that's a good confidence booster after allowing them to basically, and there is a deep drive foul, and the count is two and two. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think it's a big confidence boost after allowing them to have that big run to put it out of position and to basically start off the same in this in this game? I do think it is a big confidence confidence booster to put up a zero on that scoreboard because as this pitch is swung at it's and that's it's fair, a, it bounced. It's a foul ball. Looked uh, like it bounced inside for me, but as uh, they put up a scoreboard on the defensive side of the ball. I think anytime you can have the opportunity to hit after putting up a no run inning, I feel like that's a great opportunity for your offense to come alive and get some momentum back. And here's the offering and that is swung and hit backwards, hits the net and goes over into the stands. I heard it hit the bleachers. Hope nobody got hurt with that, but however, I think it made contact with metal. 2-2 two, two remains the count. No outs. Nobody on base. Bellevue. Bellevue. Makes a little bit of contact with it. That's going to send it foul. The energy still up in that Lady Pioneers dugout. Cheering on their team at Bellevue. And here's the offering, and that is swung on and hit hard, and it's foul. Contact is being made, but it is not staying within the field of play. That's exactly what I was just thinking, Sammy P. It's like you read my mind. A couple pitches in this head bat that were close calls to being fair. And this is kind of the complete opposite of what happened last game where they had the contact, but they kept going straight to the ground in the infield for outs. And like we were talking about there, but that gets a couple good bounces to the outfield. And Bellevue is able to get to first base. That's a strong start for the Lady Pioneers in this bottom of the second inning because anytime you can get a runner on first base with no outs, uh, drastically increases your odds of scoring. And here comes Osbrooks. Osbrooks can come in the clutch here, as we have seen in the past, and that ball goes straight up and straight down for an out. She actually made contact with the first baseman, Carly Cook, on that play. She ended up making the catch. I just wonder if she would have dropped it. They might have called Osbrooks out anyway mm -hmm. for the interference. Yeah, for interference. But she was able to hold on. And that brings up Shelby Green. And let's see what happens here with the first offering. And that is a ball. And here's the offering. And that is whacked hard and fouled. MVP Shelby Green did not play in the opening game of today's no, doubleheader, but she does enter today with a 309 batting average and a 417 on base percentage. So those are some pretty strong numbers. Very strong numbers. What are our stolen bases? She has seven, and get this, Sammy P. She has not been caught once. Zero Hasn't caught been stealing. caught once. So seven for seven. Impressive. She knows when to steal. And there's and that's a rare occurrence, Sammy P. Bellevue was actually hit by the batted ball. So in this instance, Sammy P., Bellevue is actually going to be out. Really? Yes, Sammy. We are seeing all sorts of rare occurrences today, or at least oddities occur. That is a very, that is absolutely an oddity. I mean, I've watched Major League Baseball, softball. I don't think I've ever seen that happen, and I'm not even kidding, Sammy. <coughs> I don't even know how to record that in the, as an out. As Corin Knapp is up at bat. And here's the delivery. 
And that is absolutely hammered to the outfield and hits the fence. Doesn't go over, but hits the fence. They're trying to catch her at home. It flies over. And Knapp is just going to halt at third. Almost an inside the park home run with that uh, overthrow. That was close, Sammy P. And she was very close to hitting it over the fence off the bat. Hit that sign out there in left center field. But uh, very fortunate to uh, advance all the way to third after that overthrow. As Anna Harrison looks to knock in her teammate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now, with Anna Harrison coming up, two outs. Uh, bunt that, at least this one obeyed the laws of physics. That one at least followed direction of, you know, it didn't just go straight down. It actually went backwards. There's a bat. Here's the delivery from Loing, and that is going to be uh, ball one. So the count is one ball, one strike, two outs. <clears throat> Can the Lady Pioneers tie it up? And here's the pitch, and that is – is it going to be foul? Is it called foul? It appears so. It looked like it went backwards, but however, didn't see a signal from the umpire at, at that immediate moment. If the ball starts in fair territory and ends up being played uh, or contacted by the player in foul territory, it just goes as a foul ball. And that is hammered but foul. You know, Garrett, if you're Harrison, based off how they're trying to come out in the formation, do you just kind of see if you can just hit it right beside the pitcher with some power and hope it just hits the ground and rolls? Because they're leaving a big old gap there. I certainly, I certainly feel like that is one approach you could take, try to hit it to either side of the pitcher on the ground because of the great space, mm -hmm. the void in the middle. But I also think she needs to try to – she could try to lift the ball in the air. Over the infield. She could. And your count is two and two with two outs. And Piners are only down one right now from tying it up. Be nice to go ahead and get that tying run. Or take the lead. With or take the run. lead with a home run. They can do it. And that's hammered. Drops right before the right fielder. And the game is tied. With Harrison going to first base. 3-3 three, three ball game in the bottom of the second. And you can hear that Lady Pioneers bench erupt. The Lady Pioneers bench is, at, is applauding that excellent piece of hitting by Anna Harrison. Taking the pitch, pulling it to the, the right side of the field and tying this game up. And hey, let's not forget Fuqua herself is also dangerous. She is up to bat now. <clears throat> Took a ball on the first one. The first offering, I should say. I have watched some games uh, and called a game where Fuqua was both offensive and defensive MVP. She was the borderline sole offense for the Lady Pioneers with stealing, getting on base, and I think she hammered a home run in this park too. That speaks to her at amazing athleticism. Fuqua patiently waiting, lowing on the... Offering, and there it is. Fuqua with a good bat. It drops, and that is able to extend the runners to second and to first, respectively. And now, Corey Harris comes up. If we could just get a good home run here. That would put him up by put three. Put him up by three. And I feel, like, I feel like it's a safe assessment to say that this – is their best offensive inning of the day so far. This is because it is – it's not the most they've had in an inning. That would be – I think this ties the most they've had in an inning of this series uh, today. And there's the offering. And that's going to be a strike one. Uh, 
I want to know what the uh, Lady Pioneers are saying on the bench there. We can kind of hear them in the press box, but can't really comprehend what they're saying. Uh, as we have glass and headphones around us. And that is ball one. So the count is one ball, one strike with two outs. And here's another offer from Loing. And that is good hit again into the outfield, just finding the space. And the Pioneers have taken the first lead of the doubleheader today. Excellent, excellent hitting from Corey Harris. She's one of the Lady Pioneers' best players. She put her athletic ability and her talent on display with that pitch, hitting it the opposite direction, giving her team the lead. And Katie Davis now at bat for the Lady Pioneers. Fuqua at second, and uh, that would be Harris at first. And there's definitely an infield error and trying to go home with it. They're calling her out. They're calling her out at home. Sammy P, this is an, this is that. I think we need to. Matthew, do we have a replay? Can we get can we get a can re we get a replay? Can right? we get a re-rack? We do not have replay. Fans, we viewers, to talk to, we viewers at home, rewind, rewind that. Rewind real quick. Rewind hope, that. We, we hope that uh, it was on close-up view. Because I am looking. I looked in the camera here. It's right in front of me for close-up view. And it looks like she was already touching home plate before the ball even arrived. I agree, Sammy. I'm starting to believe the Lady Pioneers were just robbed of a run. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough assessment, but I, I would tend to agree with you, Sammy. It, I, I, be, I believe she was safe, too. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, we will come back at the top of the third. You are listening to the Ball State Sports Network. And we are back at the softball field for the top of the third inning. Jules Johnson is batting for the Senators as she greets the first offer as a strike. And here comes the second offering. And that is a hit by pitch, I believe. Or did it hit the ground first? Yeah, did, so it hit, just, did it hit the ground and bounce into her? I guess that's what they'll score it as, Sammy. So a ball. So ball one, so count as one ball, one strike. She was able to get out of the way of that uh, wild pitch. And here's the offering, and two balls, one strike now. Caitlin Davis on the mound. Honestly, she's been, she's been doing pretty well so far, and that is just hammered straight up in the air. And what goes up must come down, according to the law of gravity, and it right into the mitt of Linda Kirby. Or Lydia Kirby. Why do I keep calling her Linda? Lydia Kirby. Going back to your point about Caitlin Davis before that last pitch. Coming into this game, she has a record of 11 wins against five losses, as well as a 2.85 earned run average, ERA, mm -hmm. and 65 strikeouts. So I agree, Sammy. And Amari Golden hits that one long and deep, and it's all the way to the left field for the out. Great catch there by, who was that? Was that, it's Caitlin Davis. Uh, it's Katie Davis. Katie, it was Katie, excuse me. Not Katie. In, in the left field. It was Katie Davis earlier that had it. Left field position to date. All righty. That brings up Brooke Copley, and that is... Ball one for the first offering. Yeah. 
and the senator's bench is now getting loud. And that is hammered. I believe that's going to end up being foul, though. So one ball, one strike with two outs. As it seems the senators have just hit a stroke of bad luck uh, here for a little bit. I mean, if they put up two goose eggs here and the Lady Pioneers continue to go on a run, it's not going to be pretty. And speaking of that, there is the goose egg sealer. Three straight outs for Caitlin Davis. Excellent pitching in that inning. And so, with three scored runs total for the uh, – Senators and four for the Pioneers. Your Pioneers are up by one, four to three, and have just held the Senators to two straight back-to-back -back zero run innings. We're going to take a break and catch you at the bottom of the third. You're listening to the Ball State Sports Network. And we are back for the bottom of the third where your Lady Pioneers are at bat. And that is a called ball. It is Lydia Kirby at bat. And another ball coming in. Two balls, no strikes, no outs. You're just now joining us. The Lady Pioneers lead by one, four to three. And that is strike one. And we have some wind coming up now as we have a little bit of a dust cloud forming on the, on the field. And... It's going to be ball three. The energy from the Lady Pioneers bench is still continuing. These teams love to support their teams, their, te their teammates when they're up at bat. And that is a, that's not the best uh, result from that at bat, but however. It is a result that results in an out. And now up is Bellevue. Garrett, we've seen this kind of defensive uh, position from the Senators before. What, right, you, what, what would you be thinking if you were at bat right now? Where would you be wanting to direct this hit? Honestly, I would actually try to drop a bunt down because both the first base, both players at first and third base are actually about even with the bag. So if you trust your speed to get to first base, I really like the opportunity to lay a bunt down, Sammy. Hmm. Excellent, excellent. Count is 0-2 with one out. And here's the pitch, and that is going to be ball one. But of course, Sammy, you could just swing true and smash a home run, too. You could. Either way. You could. You always can do that. That is always an option. Here at the Ball State Sports Network, we like home runs. 
we will never complain about home runs. And that is slammed out foul. And a n same exact flight pattern that to go foul. Nearly, that was nearly identical. Near identical. We were just talking earlier about how no two exactly. hits are the same. Uh, Those were pretty close, Sammy. That is the exception, not the rule. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that is hammered again foul. Same side, too. As we were also talking earlier with uh, the earlier pitcher, Michaela Ramsey, for the Senators, the Pioneers are also making Haley Lying throw a lot of pitches early in this game, try to force these, force him into deep counts, uh, tiring out the pitcher. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like that. That is always a good strategy for that because we discussed earlier, and that's out. And that brings up Bailey Osbrooks. Osbrooks has, I think, either flown out or gotten on base every attempt uh, this uh, today's series. That's right, Sam. She sends it. And honestly, I like that approach to batting. I like it. Just send it. That's right. If it if you set it hard enough, it'll leave the park. Whether it's fair or not, don't know. <laughs> Yet to be determined. As it is two balls and no strikes, two outs. But if there's anybody to do a solo home run, it would be Osbrooks. As she sends that one backwards and foul into the net. Count as two balls, one strike. Two outs. Wish we had a pitch count uh, up here for, That'd be for us to be able to tell how many uh, pitches uh, Lawing has thrown this game so far. And that is going to be ball three. It would be interesting to keep track of the pitch count, like you said, pitch by pitch. Try to find connections between the amount of pitches and stamina. Ooh, swing, but they're going to call it a walk. She was able to hold up there. Almost got through. Almost got through. And now Shelby Green returns. And I believe she actually, uh, last inning, she actually sent a ball up uh, the middle of the field. And that was the one that ended off. up hitting uh, Bellevue, and Bellevue was called out. Yes, now I remember, yes. As that offering goes foul. I still don't know how to score that. I mean, I've never, like we said, I've never seen that before, so. Do you give an error to a batter? <laughs> I don't think, I mean. Is it possible? I don't know if you can give an error to the runner either. I just, it wouldn't we, be an error. We need a rules umpire real quick. We really do. As that pitch is a strike. Count is no balls, two strikes, two outs. And that is going to be a called ball. If you're the Lady Pioneers, would you like to go ahead and not have a repeat of last game where it's pretty close and then gets out of hand quickly, so you'd like to go ahead and put it away now? I Absolutely. I think you can try to put it put as many runs up the, on the board as early as possible to put this game out of reach. Go ahead and end it now, I guess, as the count is now 2-2 two, two with two outs. And that is hammered and foul going over the Pioneers' dugout. And 
Packers sending a player to go retrieve that foul ball. And here's the pitch. And that is sent into the center field. And that is going to be taking a bounce. And now we have runners on second and first with Corin Knapp coming up. Who, honestly, I believe last time actually was the one that started everything off uh, in the second, in the bottom of the second. That's right. She, uh, she hit one deep to the left center field that almost was a home run, hit that sign out there in left center field and could have advanced home after an overthrow, but she was able to come in from third base. I wonder if it took a different bounce, and instead of after hitting the top of the fence, bounced in, if it bounced out, would that have just been an automatic double or would that have just have been a home run? If, if, the, ball, if the ball hits the, the field in play and then bounces over the fence, it would be a ground rule double. Well, what it did was I believe it hit the top of the fence. Like straight up landed top fence as that hits the top of our press box. I was waiting for the thud, Sammy. I hope it got that would be. That thing, is, it's already put a hole in the uh, wood steps over next to us. I, I discovered it when I was going down to get my food um, between uh, the games. Count is one ball, one strike with two outs. And now it is two balls, one strike. Two outs. And that is hammered and goes foul. It's almost, oh wow. It's almost as if with every at bat, the Lady Pioneers bench is just getting louder and louder. Louder and louder and louder to the point to where I'm pretty sure. Next inning, we'll be able to actually understand what they're saying through the glass and headphones. That's a strong possibility. Well, we're close now. We're close. We're close now. And that is, again, coming back. Nope. It, we couldn't even see that one. Did it get caught for the out? Or it ended up, uh, ended up hitting a foul ground. Ended up hitting a foul ground. I'm not sure if it – I can't tell. I couldn't tell if it actually hit the net. It went – no, it didn't hit back. the net. It didn't hit the net because we would have seen it ripple effect up. That's a good point. So it it just went straight up and straight back down, as the law of gravity says it should do. And here's the pitch. And swing in a miss. And that is strike three to end the bottom of the third inning. Score is your Lady Pioneers are up one, four to three. You will be watching, hopefully, as we will be right back on the Ball State Sports Network after this break. And we are back. Score is 4-3. Your Lady Pioneers are up one. And I believe we have, who's up? Who's up at bat? Should be Carly Cook. Carly Cook for Number the Senators. Yep. Number 28, Carly Cook, playing first base for the Senators today. And 
And here's the offering, and that is sent straight back foul. the pitch swing and a miss one ball two strikes the count with no outs here at the top of the fourth great pitch by Caitlin Davis to get ahead in the count as our tech guy has uh, vanished for a split second there is a little hit and that is the first out of the inning Good coverage there by the shortstop. It was, a strong, it was a strong play after a great pickup. She kind of bobbled it a little bit. Great job to recover and have the 6-3 put out. And here's the pitch. And it's a strike straight down the middle. I just noticed, I just noticed Sammy, that with our tech guy gone, we won't have the updated... Uh, Balls and strikes in the outs. We might get it from the umpire. Oh, no, no, no. He doesn't run that one. It's up there. And while we were discussing that, strike two appeared on the board. It's run by a member of the team, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's ran by a member of the team as ball one shows up. See, it might not be on our scoreboard, but it's on the scoreboard that matters. And swing and a miss for strike a three for out number two. Giving us number 12, Aniston Hughesley. Oh, Hughesley. It's a great pitch by Caitlin Davis there to use her change up to a retired Sarah Ever swinging. And first offering was a ball. And that's another ball. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. And strike one. Here's another offering. Ball three. Three balls, one strike, two outs. And that is sent straight back foul for strike two. So we got a full count now. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. And swing and a miss for strike three. As that changes the sides, we will take another break. Your Pioneers are up four to three. You're listening to the Vol State Sports Network.
And we are back for the bottom of the fourth inning. Anna Harrison is up to bat for the Lady Pioneers as they lead four to three. And here is the pitch and hit by a pitch immediately. And Harrison goes straight to first. That was an interesting play, Sam, because it appeared as because if she had if the umpire had ruled that she had swung at it. It would have counted as a strike, and she would not have been awarded first base. No. So now they're going to go back and discuss and determine whether or not they think she swung or not. Because, like I just said, if she didn't swing, she gets first base. If she did swing, then she would have to come back to first base with one strike. Hmm. So let's see what they rule here. Here's the replay here, as brought to us by our tech guy, Matthew. It looks like it was curving straight towards the batter from our replay. So more than likely, she probably didn't swing. She didn't offer at it, and she will probably be awarded first base. And that appears what they're doing. I feel like it's the right call, don't you think? Oh, I do. I feel like it's the right call. I feel like it is the right call. As Fuqua comes up to bat. And just looks at that one go right down the middle for a strike. Again, no, oh, right into the glove of the pitcher wow. for an immediate double play. Great reaction time by the pitcher. Haley lying to stick that glove out, catch it around the midsection, and then double off the runner, Anna Harrison, for a double play. And now at bat, Corey Harris. Coming in after that, two outs have been on the board. They're going to call that a ball. And a, it's going to be a strike. And that's hammered, but foul. So the count is one ball, two strikes, two outs. And that is going to be ball two. And here's the pitch. Hit straight up. Is that going to come over the net? No, right in front of the net and hits it. But it appears it was caught by the reaction of the Senators for the out to retire the side. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will bring us to the top of the fifth. We will take a little break. You're watching the Ball State Sports Network.
And we are back for the top of the fifth with Abigail Taylor batting for the Senators. And there's a bunt immediately fielded by the pitcher, and that is out immediately. Kaylin Davis with an ex extraordinary reaction time to field the ball just over her head and get the force out of Taylor at first base. I mean, we, we were just talking about this in the break. Only nine more outs for Walter State, and the game's over with. But now it's eight. And here's the offering. That now batting for uh, Walter State, Kaylee Dixon. The, the count is now no balls, one strike, one out. Trying to lay down a bunt there, it looked like, but it sails for a ball. And they deferred down to the first baseman to see if they want to rule that Dixon swung, but first base umpire ended up saying that she didn't, so counts as a ball. I don't see how if you go for a, bat, a bunt, and that is fielded, sent over, calls safe. She dropped it at first. So now we got uh, Nora Mack coming up. Great hustle there by Kaylee Dixon. It's run out, it's run out that play, knowing that strong effort could yield a hit, and that's exactly what happened. And here's the pitch. Runner, and that sails, but Dixon still remains held up at second. It's another occurrence of Strong defending by Anna Harrison out there in center field to keep the ball from rolling past her to the outfield wall. And so now the count is one ball, no strikes, one out. And that is strike one. And that's hit hard, goes over to the center field, trying to catch at home, but cannot, and game is tied by Dixon. Running all the way from second, all the way to home because of a good knock from Nora Mack. We could hear the contact of the ball to bat on that hit up here in the booth. Nora Mack absolutely smoked that ball to tie the game. And now we got Jules Johnson. And a stolen base again at second. Count is now one ball, no strikes, one out. Runner on second. Stolen bases absolutely changed the momentum of games, and that's back to back stolen bases by the Senators. That's how they got in this position last time. There's a foul ball. Swing, and that is to be ruled foul. I think she hit it off her. Left foot? Probably. Didn't really see. Counters now one ball, two strikes, one out. Runner on second. Tied up at four. And that is a swing. And tip foul. And that is hammered, sent to the shortstop, out at first for two outs. 
And now, Amari Golden up to bat. And Golden had a – Golden sent a ball pretty far uh, in the uh, first – at the top of the first inning to, I think, have it then be uh, – I think that was the – Three nothing shot there. I think we had a one. I think somebody got home on a sack uh, fly, and then somebody ended up getting to second, and we ended up having a nice shot to get it to be three nothing. As the first offering approached, and it was a ball. And that's gonna be strike one. And that is hit almost into the dugout of the Lady Pioneers, and that is going to be foul. Count remains. One ball, two strikes, two outs. And that is hit but fouled. And swing and a miss, and that will retire the side. Game tied up 4-4. We'll be back for the bottom of the fifth. You're listening to the Vol State Sports Network. And we are back at the bottom of the fifth inning. And now, Katie Davis at bat for the Lady Pioneers. Looking to go ahead and reclaim the lead after it got tied. And that is going to be a good hit. And at first. They're going to rule that it, she, as she was stepping out of the batter's box and made contact with the ball, that she hit it off her right foot, I believe. And it'll end up being a foul ball. Oh, crazy. If you think back, Sammy, earlier in this game, she was the one that was called out at home. And all three of us mm -hmm. in the booth thought that she was safe. But ended up, the ruling ended up being that she was out. And that's a big reason why they only have four runs. Well, maybe it's because that uh, home plate is dusty and crusty. And that is a fly out. When was the last time that they cleaned off the home plate? That's a great question, Sammy. Exactly. And now with uh, Leah Kirby coming up at bat. And it's a strike. Can't be the only having a hard issue seeing uh, with the cameras in the way, right? Maybe it's because I'm directly in front of the cameras. And that pitch is going to be another sh called strike. So two strikes, no balls, one out. And 
another offering, and there's going to be one ball. So the count is one ball, two strikes, one out. And that is hammered, goes right past the second baseman, and Kirby's able to get to first base. And now here comes Bellevue. Kirby absolutely crushed that ball to the second baseman. It was a tough hop yet again, Sammy. What's up with these? What's up with these mad hops, man? Mad hops. Mad crazy, hops. crazy bounces. Either way, Kirby, Kirby stands on first base as the go-ahead run in this game. Bellevue up to bat. And swing it back and change anything. And what are they going to say? That is going to be a called strike by the umpire. I think that's the one call I actually I agree with on the up today. The rest of the calls have been a bit shady. And that is going to be a called ball. So the count is 1-1, one, one, one ball, one strike, one out. That's going to be another ball. You can hear the Lady Pioneers bench just echoing that energy as that is hammered deep into right field and caught. That makes it two outs. Ross Brooks is up to bat. First offering is a ball. One ball, no strikes, two outs, one runner on base. And that is hammered. And is Ross going to have the speed? And they are saying she was out, but she clearly looked on the bag to me. That's another that's another questionable call from our umpire and crew today. Not here to criticize, but Sammy, this is another instance where we need the replay. Maybe Matthew can re-rack it for us. We'll see. But it's just something you would like to potentially be able to like to see in a collegiate sports more Is often. Matthew just going to have to leave his phone on the stream so he can just constantly re-rack? We'll find that out. Uh, here, Matthew, can you bring us the uh, bring us the replay? Let's see if that's the replay. All right, that is this is the replay. Ooh, she, ah, I mean, she was right on it as she was leaning in to grab it. So, and the old rule is tie goes to the runner, but. It's a guess, tough break for the Lady Pioneers. Guess that rule is gone now. And uh, we will take a little bit of a break as we wait uh, for everybody to get set. You're listening to the Vol State Sports Network. And welcome back to the Ball State softball field, where the game is still tied with Brooke Copley coming up to bat for the Senators. And that is hit hard, and you're going to be caught out. We just, we were talking about it during the break, only six outs needed if we can get another run for the uh, Pioneers, but however, 
Now it's five, and the Pioneers can get another run next up. And after that, we have uh, number 28, Carly Cook. And she watches that one go through for a strike. Another pitch, and that sails through for a ball. And another offering, and that is almost swung on. What are they going to call it? Calling a ball. Two balls, one strike, one out. And swing and a miss. And that is another ball. Full count with one out. As Cook patiently waiting for the next pitch. And that is a walk. So now, that walk, Evers is coming up at bat. Here's, here's we have made a change for the runner. That would be Emma Keck. That's the second straight game she's come in as a pinch runner. Mm -hmm. Second straight game. And as we are waiting for everybody to get settled so that we can get to this at bat, tell me what, uh, tell me what uh, Evers did. Last time she was up here, uh, her her two plate appearances today were a fly out to right field and a strikeout swinging. Well, she looked at that one, I do believe, for the first strike. And another offering comes through. One ball, one strike, one out. One runner on base. And there's the offering, and that is sent back for a foul ball. And that is sent and swung on and missed, and that is going to be out number two. Which now that brings up. Now there's a discrepancy in what Paul. the pitch count was, but Sammy, I do think that was strike three. Because mm -hmm. that, the first swing and miss, the tip foul, and that swing and miss. Strike three. So I wonder what the confusion was over. I do not know. But now. It's number 10. We have a substitution now. Uh, Hayden Campbell is up. Also making another substitution appearance just as she did in the first game. And immediately getting a strike upon entering the batter box. A second offering, and that goes. Ooh. That was close runner to down. hitting the runner. Oh, no, just oversold it, and that is it's still a ball in play, but I think nobody's going to move. 
That was a crazy sequence, Sammy. That was a crazy sequence. Honestly, if I think it was Fuqua that had that, if she had been a little bit more on point, that's an out at second. I agree. And there was there was a slight possibility there that the runner at first base almost got hit with the mm -hmm. ball. That was almost a second that occurrence. That would have been a second occurrence. And that would have been an out. That would have been odd. But however, with runners at uh, second and first, the batter who entered the box is... I believe that is, uh, I believe that is Taylor. Yes, Abigail Taylor. And two strikes now on the count with two outs. Is this the one to end it? And knocks it over into left field. And allows everybody to get on base. So bases are loaded. I mean, they've been in the situation before. And Dixon is now back up. I mean, if Dixon hits a home run here and hits a grand slam. That could put this game out of reach. That could put the game out of reach. Because that would be up by four. An entire repeat of the first game. I think in order for... The Lady Pioneers to avoid a repeat of that fate. Caitlin Davis is just going to have to continue to play her game, throw pitches into the strike zone, maybe change up the pace a little bit, maybe throw some change ups, throw off the rhythm of the mm -hmm. Senators. But uh, the important part right now is you need to get Dixon out to keep it from escalating any further. Crucial moment here for the Pioneers. Starting off with a strike. And that's going to be ball one. One ball, one strike, two outs. Now there's another slight conference going on. I wonder what this is about. Now to pinch runner. Can we see who that is? Number number twelve. Ennis Ennis Aniston Hughesley. She was replaced by Hayden Campbell. Mm hmm Or if you can double substitute like that. Apparently you can. That's an interesting rule that I was not aware of. Neither was I. And that is sent. Oh, but it bounced off and hit the runner on second. And the game is now getting out of hand. Two runs scored for the Senators. And runners are on the corners. That was clutch hitting by Kaylee Dixon. To get and her Nora Mack is now back out of here on the, in the batter box. So... Seems to me it's already a repeat of the same of the same story from the game earlier. Had it close just to let it get out of hand. Especially in a winnable situation, but Lady Pioneer still can't come back from this. There's still two shots at getting back. Six outs to play with. They'll have their opportunity. And there's the offering. One ball, one strike with two outs. And there's another pitch, and there's a stolen base coming from second. Coming from, second, coming from first to second. I think that goes down as Kaylee Dixon's. Mm -hmm. Third stolen base just in the second game of the doubleheader. Just in the second game of the doubleheader. Good gravy. Can Mack hit her two teammates home? And possibly even herself. And that's going to be going down as strike two. 
Two balls, two strikes, two outs. A lot of pressure riding on Nor here. There's the offering, and that is hit straight into the center field, and that is going to end the top of the sixth inning. And we are going to come back after this break. Your Vol State Lady Pioneers are down by two, six to four. You are looking. And we are back with your Lady Pioneers at bat to try to save this game. And Shelby Green is up. Immediately took the first offering as a strike swing in a little bit, but didn't commit all the way. And second offering comes. That is hit long, hard over center. And that goes behind the fence. For a single shot home run. And ladies and gentlemen, that puts the Lady Pioneers back within one. That's a huge play. That's a huge turn of momentum for the Lady Pioneers to get a run on the board without giving up any outs. Shelby Green not playing in the first game, making her presence felt and known here in the second game, Sammy. Mm -hmm. Precisely. She is making it felt, known, and heard by the Lady Pioneers bench. And now there's a conference, and there's going to be a pitching change, it appears. Let's see who, Let's see who comes the out. The Senators coach gives the ball to now. As Loing goes back to the bench, it appears to be, I think that is just number 23. Yep. That is Michaela Ramsey coming back out. This is interesting. This is an interesting situation because she if just you, pitched earlier. If you recall from our earlier game, Ramsey was replaced by Lying. And mm -hmm. now in the second game, Lying is replaced by Ramsey. Of course, Lying shut down the Lady Pioneers in the last game after she came in in relief. Maybe Ramsey will have the same fate in this game, Sammy. In the same inning, too. It's true. Well, as Ramsey warms up again, I guess we'll take a quick break. Oh, it appears that she is going to be... Oh, it appears that she's done warming up. And we have... Uh, who's coming back now? Corinne Knapp is back up here. and She's the one that kind of started everything off uh, last game, and I think earlier in this, in this game, too. She did start everything off earlier in this game with that triple. And the first offering is a strike. The second offering is a ball. I wonder what the third pitch will be. You think it's going to end up being a strike? What do you think, Garrett? That's a coin flip, obviously. Well, technically it is a strike because it was fouled. I guess I would have lost a bet. I was thinking ball. Wishful thinking, I suppose. Oh, 
Almost got hit by that one. Two balls, two strikes. And that is sent straight backwards into the net. Count remains. Two balls, two strikes, no outs. Bottom of the sixth inning. And now we have a full count. A swing and a miss goes down swinging at least. That is the first out of the inning. And Anna Harrison's up to bat now. And there's the offering, and that then goes for a ball. And another offering, and that is fouled. And that is going to be another foul. So the count is one ball, two strikes, one out. And that is going to be fielded and sent to first for the out. Such a strong start, two back-to-back -back outs for the Lady Pioneers at bat. And now we got Michaela Fuqua up to bat. Coming up with two outs in a very, very run-needing situation. Michaela Fuqua can... Follow the fate of her teammate Shelby Green. This game would be tied. And I believe she can, but however, at the moment, not going with it as that first offering was a strike. And another just missed opportunity there. That one was the ball, though. That looked like it went in the exact same spot as last time. It really did. And that is good contact, but caught for the final out of the sixth inning. And we are heading into the final inning. Your Ball State Lady Pioneers down one. Can they come back? Find out after this break. You're listening to the Ball State Sports Network.
And we are back at the softball field. Jules Johnson's up to bat for the Senators. And your Vol State Pioneers are down one after leading, what, four to, four to one, four to three? They're now down by one, six to five. And Jules Johnson's up to bat and hammers one immediately over to the left field and is able to get on base. Now, not mistaken, it is Amari Golden who sends one foul, and that's going to have the count be a one. And here's the pitch, and that's going to be another foul ball. And here's another pitch, and that is fielded and caught for the out double play. There was the opportunity for the ground for the double play from Knapp over to first base, but they were only able to get the one out oh, on the fielder. Like it looked like it looked like she had made that throw, because I mean, she caught that, or did it bounce and the, the glove? The second baseman went to go catch the ball, but the runner was already at first base before she could. Ah make the effort to throw the ball, so she just played it safe and ate it. But there's a second out. Well, there's a second out. I didn't even notice that. I was watching the ball the whole time. There's the second out. And now we got Carly Cook. How, how did uh, Cook do her last at-bats, Garrett? She uh, reads space on a walk. As we have a ball. She might reach base again on the walk if these balls keep going. And another one. So, count is 1-1. One, one, one ball, one strike. And that ball is sent over towards the fire hall. And that is one ball and two strikes now with two outs. Davis looking to give her teammates a chance by getting Cook out here and maintaining it being a one uh, possession lead for the Senators. So all it'll take is somebody to get on base and a home run, and it's game. That would be a walk-off winner. And so here we go. One ball, two strikes, and a wild pitch, and I guess that is going to be retiring the sides. And so that brings us to the final inning. The most dramatic half of the inning. The bottom of the seventh. The bottom of the final inning. Pioneers are at bat. Can they and will they score two runs to come back and win this? You will find out, as we will, after this break. You're listening to the Ball State Sports Network.
And here we are, the final half of the inning, the bottom of the seventh. Corey Harris, the first to bat for the Lady Pioneers. If Harris does reach base here, Sammy, you can almost expect, you can almost guarantee a stolen She's base steal. attempt will, will be made. Try to advance to second base. Count now is one ball, one strike. And another offering, and that is going to be two balls and one strike with no outs. That's going to be two balls, two strikes. The fans are on the edge of their seat as that one is sent out into left field and caught for the out. If you are the Senators, two more outs till you have the sweep of today's series. It would be three in a row going back to the three second game from yesterday. It would be a series win. It would be 3-1. Mm -hmm. And now Katie Davis comes up. Katie Davis. And that's a ball. And that is hit. We made a little bit of shortstop and out at first. And it's looking like it is going to be a sad ending to today's game for the Pioneers. But we've seen them in this position before where they have two outs and can put together three runs. That's right. And that magic could start with Lydia Kirby. It did before in the previous game. Exactly she right. got a hit, got a single, and then everybody else carried it the rest of the way. That's a ball. And that is another ball. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Two balls, one strike, two outs. And that has been fielded at third and sent over for the out to end the game. Final score. The Walter State Senators, six. Your Vol State Lady Pioneers, five. And Garrett, good performance by the Lady Pioneers, but they just didn't have enough in it to finish today. That's exactly right. That's a great assessment. The clutch hitting by Walter State Senators, especially uh, Kaylee Dixon with a RBI in the sixth inning to give her team the win. Ball State was hung, hung in there today. Realistically, both games had the one in, uh, pretty tough inning. In the last game, was all there was there all the game today the second time. But like you said, Walter State was a little better today. Mm -hmm. And with that, let's go ahead and do our game MVP. Do you have to win to be MVP? I think you do. We can we can give a we can give a shout out to uh, Shelby Green. Her home run to straightaway center field was pretty impressive to watch. I think she was Ball State's player of the game today. She definitely was, but uh, I would say definitely 100% for Walter State. Michaela Ramsey at the very end sealed it, and she would be the player of the game for them. Especially on the defensive side, I do think Kaylee Dixon deserves some credit recognition on the offensive side of the ball as well. 
That concludes today's broadcast. I am Sammy P. And I'm Garrett Backus. Thank you for watching the Vol State's uh, Sports Network. We will see you the next game.